Hi, Kristen. Hi, Charles. Why are we here? I don't know. I never know. Hi, I'm Kristen. And I'm Charles. Slow Blinks. And today on Slow Blinks TV, we're going to be talking about the little known but greatly loved Jack of All Trades. One thing I do want to give a quick disclaimer on, the other episodes that we've done have been shows that were more targeted towards children. And this one, even though it's filmed a lot like a cartoon, does have some references to more violent things or more sexual things, so just a heads up. But Amelia, for the love of God, think of your wedding night. Napoleon will be like a gopher at a golf course, in and out of every hole. Jack of all trades. Yes, so I'm, uh, I'm really excited to talk about this. This really threads a very particular t TV niche that you and I both really, really love. So we absolutely love the star of this show, Bruce Campbell. Where might we know him from? Uh, Evil Dead and its sequels, which were produced uh, and, and written and directed by Sam Raimi. That is the same production company that did... Xena, Hercules, Young Hercules, I think Cleopatra 2525. So we absolutely love Hercules' legendary journey as well as Xena. I've seen most of the episodes of both and have a very soft spot in my heart for them that the doctors are looking into now. But let's talk about... Jack of all trades. Let's talk a little bit about the premise of the show. Jack Styles, played by the incredible Bruce Campbell. Mm -hmm. um, he is hired by Thomas Jefferson to go to the island of Palau Palau, just stop the French. Which doesn't make sense because in the Revolutionary War, they were actually supported by the French. Yes. Heavily. It's supposed to take place in the Caribbean. I think Blackbeard makes an appearance in one of the episodes. He meets a British secret agent named Amelia, and they work together to try and thwart uh, the local governor, who's Napoleon's brother. And he doesn't have one of Napoleon's real brother's names. He's just called Governor Croak. There's, the management of Palau Palau is supposed to be French. Like the governors, the soldiers are all supposed to be French. But it's clear that you only had to do a French accent if you wanted to. A recurring character on the show is actually Napoleon, and he is played by Vern Troyer, who did Mini-Me. Yeah, and who does not attempt a French Jack accent Jack. at all. Uh, Jack Styles has an alter ego mm -hmm. named the Daring Dragoon. He's a little bit Scarlet Pimpernel. That's based on a local legend in Palau Palau that he adopts to jump in and stop situations that he can't as Jack Style. And then also Amelia is like a steampunk style inventor who invents a bunch of anachronistic like yes. devices. On their steampunk submarine, which is like one episode. Oh. And there's like weird like green light up things. And those are exactly the same ones they use in Star Trek Voyager. Oh, for the Borg regeneration chamber? For the Borg chambers? regeneration chamber. Oh, cool. <laughs> and I, you know, I think of the steampunk era as more Victorian, and this would have been Georgian, but yeah. it's all the past. So <laughs> exactly. we just, we go with it. Now, this doesn't have a lot of her inventions in this particular episode. We're going to be talking about episode eight, which is a wedding and an execution. It starts out with Napoleon surprise showing up in the governor's vault. He must have been like just so confident that he would go and open his vault that day. Yeah, <laughs> just it's so incredibly dangerous what he has done. He bursts out and he says, I cannot impregnate Josephine and I need a new wife. And they went with the Napoleon was a short, crazy guy narrative that wasn't true, and wasn't historically accurate. So the governor brings out all these ladies on the island for him to peruse and judge their legs and teeth strength. Um, but he doesn't seem to like any of them. He does really use the sort of human chattel kind of qualifications of like a horse. You know, they're like a horse. Amelia and Jack walk in. He just picks Amelia and then when she rejects him, he's like... <laughs> I will break you. So they set up a dinner for later that night. There is a quick cut scene that I feel like if you blink you miss it. And that's actually Jack going to Charles' favorite character, who's a secret agent named Jean-Claude, who's a little parrot that wears people clothes and is smart enough to be a secret agent. I don't know why he bothers me so much. Uh, yeah, so he, so he tasks him with a mission and he says something along the lines of like, you're gonna get her. You're gonna go get her. And you can see Jack sort of formulating a plan on how to fix this. One of the things the governor says is like, no man could stand in his way. And he says, no man, eh? 
Can we talk just a little bit about the governor? He's an interesting character because I don't he's the antagonist. Mm -hmm. But whenever his brother Napoleon's around, he kind of teams up with... Ally. He becomes an ally. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It does cut to, after that, to the dinner scene between Amelia and Napoleon. Uh, this is probably the most cartoony element of the show. They wanted to make Napoleon as gross as possible and for some reason just picking out a wife like a slave or a horse isn't gross enough mm -hmm. and they had to do something else so i mean you just think of like lord of the rings Thor biting into that one tomato gross yeah it was nasty and it, it's enough to make you be like this is a person who doesn't care i do kind of wish they would have taken the napoleon route <laughs> Well, in Lord of the Rings. Can you imagine okay, with those well, special this, effects? This is how they did it in this episode of Jack of All Trades. <laughs> yeah, so now imagine that's Denethor. <laughs> A very different scene. <laughs> A very different scene. It loses <laughs> almost all tension. Pippin's trying to sing that song. That's that song. <laughs> this behind. The world. So, what, then he tried to right? Yes, and this is where the big prop thing comes in because she f freaks out and immediately traps him under a comedically large cloche. <laughs> That's like, they had no food that was big enough to be under that, so. Yeah, and I feel like he could have just farted and lifted it up. <laughs> he might have died. But he might have died. Because of the air not getting out. This is when we meet Jacqueline. Right. Which is her mother, but is, of course, Bruce Campbell in drag. Yeah, and in terrible drag. Really bad drag. More of a, not, I would say less drag and more pantomime lady. Yes, that's, that's you know what, that's a really good point. He is a pantomime lady. He has decided that the best way to put off Napoleon is to be a terrible new mother-in-law. And he sort of treats Napoleon like, like a little, a little like a little kid, which you're not really you're not supposed to treat little people like little kids. Yeah, she just does. She just treats him like a little baby and carries him around without his consent. Yeah, just picks um, him up and like pinches his cheeks and Yeah, it's really uncomfortable. Are you trying to pick me up to keep me from touching fire? I remember that there's a scene between Amelia and Jack where she kind of confronts him and is like, no, I want to marry Napoleon because yes. I think I can actually make more of a difference if I'm married to the most powerful man in the world. Yes. And he's like, yeah. You li then he says some really weird line. You're assuming you can change him, which is the second most popular myth afflicting your particular gender. Oh, and dare I ask what the first is? Oh, I'll give you the long and short of it one day, sister. But for right now, I can't let you marry that little pipsqueak. But you, seriously, though, you can't change a man. So, like... Don't marry somebody because you can change him. You can change women. Women can change, men can. Okay, so the next scene is actually Jack in his drag talking to the governor and the governor sort of congratulating him on his really terrible idea that is really repelling Napoleon, but it's not really working because Napoleon is just gonna lock him in a dungeon as soon as they're married. Yeah, he says he'll just marry Amelia and then he'll just put you in the best deal. So. so this whole scene is basically just him hamming it up as Jacqueline and they're going over the like wedding preparations as he sort of just carries Napoleon around like a child. Napoleon yeah. doesn't like any of this stuff. The captain comes in and is like, why don't you just get married at the chapel on the island? Oh, the captain has very little to do in this episode, but in, in other episodes, he is basically the primary antagonist. But he's like a little bit smarter than the governor, although not that much, and is more adversarial towards Jack. And just at the very end, Jack and the governor are talking and Jack says, I have one more idea, and that's the great tradition of a bachelor party. Yes, so they're going to throw Napoleon a bachelor party, and they do, and it's pretty rad. You get to see uh, Vern Troyer just shout the word woo over and over again. Wee. And what I love about this is the plan is we're gonna get him so drunk 
that he's gonna go to bed with these other women, he'll oversleep and be too hungover to get married. Yeah, he would just reschedule it. All it does is make him a few minutes late to the wedding. Yeah. So they really play up the hangover part when he comes into the church. He is... <laughs> he vomits in a basin. Yeah, which I think is supposed to be like a holy water thing yeah. because later he washes his face in it. And then he eats up some communion wafers to try to settle his stomach. Jack is there in drag as Jacqueline and has to excuse himself. So he says that he's overcome and he wants this ceremony to continue and he steps out of the ceremony so that he can step into the vestibule and become the Daring Dragoon? Yes, but first he has to have a lot of banter with a priest. Yeah, there's apparently, apparently the priest was like holding confession during, <laughs> during their what? church service. It's kind of funny, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of filler, I guess. But I guess the good news is that the priest can't tell anybody who the Daring Dragoon is because oh, yeah. it's under the seal of confession. Yeah, that it's a, a, a woman named Jacqueline. It's actually the drag Daring Dragoon. We see the Daring Dragoon bust in right as Amelia is about to say, I do, and he challenges Napoleon to a duel. I honestly think the fight scene between them is really fun because if one of your pers one of your com combatants is Bruce Campbell, great at action comedy, mm -hmm. then the other person is Vern Troyer with the ability to fly, who's also, I really like that they make him like an equivalent or potentially better swordsman than Jack. And then they also have a few guards join in, so there's like kind of a group sword scene that's interesting. And it's just mostly comedic, like Vernon Troyer like pokes Bruce Campbell in the butt a couple of times and then Bruce Campbell like just puts his face in some dessert. Mm -hmm. And then... Josephine shows up. <laughs> Napoleon! This is how we know that Claude, Jean-Claude, Jean the parrot. Jean-Claude can fly faster than any bird ever. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Yes. And got over very quickly to France, was able to retrieve Josephine and come back within a couple of days. And Josephine is ho was horrible. Yes. She says that he has chores to do back at the palace. Which, and, no. <laughs> and then she car yeah, carries him away, like pulls him away like a little toddler. After that, the daring dragoon disappears and Amelia catches up with Jack. Yes, and they have a very cute little picnic with champagne. <laughs> a picnic is fun, but it's extra fun when you got champers in the park. <laughs> There's kids here. And they just sort of agree that, yeah, it probably wasn't the best idea for her to marry him anyway, and she's actually glad that Jack interfered. Yep. And then they toast with champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see this incredible pouring of two glasses of champagne. You know, Jack, if you hold it at more of an angle, you won't get so much head on there. Just saying. Well, yeah, I um, I think we picked a great episode to talk about. I have no idea where to get this other than just buying it off of Amazon. So if you're really intrigued by it and want to buy it off of Amazon, it's pretty fun to watch. Yeah, it's two seasons, but there's only 18 episodes of the whole show, right? It's 22. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. But we're all having a lot of fun here.